All right, what's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Richie. I'm the developer on Traverse the Void, and this is the first um, video update I'm doing. Um, yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing yet, and I don't have a plan. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, hopefully it's entertaining for everybody and you can let me know if it is or isn't. Uh, and that'll kind of dictate how I'll go about this uh, in future weeks. Uh, so let's see, I don't really have a plan on what to show today because I haven't done one of these before. Um, and so there's not much of a, I guess, um, ground to start building off of. Um, so let's just, I guess, go look at uh, one of the levels and talk about it a little bit, and then I'll show a new level I'm working on and some of the new features. We'll just see what happens. All right, so we'll start with the first level, which is the same as it has been. Um, you can see I did update the textures on the objects. I'm, I haven't done like a, a big graphics pass yet at all in the game, mostly because I've been trying to figure out the mechanics and the level editor and uh, for lack of a better way of saying find the fun as they say um, and I felt like I, I can easily get really distracted bogged down and playing around with graphics for months on end and I was afraid of doing that uh, and you know polishing something that wasn't um, wasn't fun enough um, but I did want to get like a start of a visual style going so I've been looking at this idea of um, Ruins, so this combination of the terrain, which is a little bit abstract, and then these kind of ruins with these uh, this blue glowing accent. Um, looked at the Chozo uh, architecture and graphics from Metroid um, and another other places. Thought a little bit about um, what's it called, Indiana Jones. Uh, hopefully, over the next you know six months or so. The, the kind of the vision about how this is incorporated will come along more and more. Um, I oh that do, that does make me think that uh, I've seen other games do this nice thing where they have a Trello board and a public Trello board that uh, that outlines the roadmap and milestones, which is something I'd like to do. I'm still trying to define the next year's roadmap, but um, I. I don't do a good job of communicating uh, what you know my intentions are, so I, I, I know that's something that's important I want to work on, give people an idea of where this is heading. Uh, okay, so this is the first level. Nothing's much changed. Um, I need to turn up the audio a little bit. I can't really hear it that well. Let's see, is there anything? Oh, yeah, one thing that I did change, a couple of things. Uh, the Coyote Jump, I think I'll get into a little later. But just an idea of what it is, it's um, to deal with a couple of things. One is I don't like how you used to lose all your momentum when you land from a jump. Uh, it felt like there was no way to maintain speed. Uh, and then two is that, uh, you know, how do you deal with like accidentally being on the edge or falling off an edge, which is something that they deal with in 2D platformers, interestingly. That's why I call it the coyote jump. So basic idea is... When you land, if you're still holding the, the grab buttons down like you're going to jump again, you will slide and main your, maintain your mom, momentum if you jump fast enough. Uh, it also means that you won't slide off edges immediately. So here's a small jump. No, that wasn't good. Maybe here from here. So here, I'll jump, hold down, slide, and then go. And so that may, allows me to maintain my speed while I'm going. Uh, and then another thing that I incorporated this time is a checkpoint system. So uh, in this level, it's, it's pretty short, but I'm really interested in, in giving people the ability to build longer levels. Something that I'll show later is the um, key system. So you can have some a little bit of branching paths, um, path logic, uh, at least kind of branch off to get a key and then return to a location. Uh, so I felt like check, well, checkpoints are important. So these are on your new inventory slots on your wrists. I can grab one, stick it in, and now I have a uh, a checkpoint. So if I was to just jump off into the nothingness, and there we go. So I can load from checkpoint, and there I am, back on my checkpoint. Um, right now there's just two you start to level with. I'm not sure. I mean, I have... 
incorporated this idea of treasure chests, so maybe you will find more in the level. Um, that's the kind of things I'm interested in people discussing and giving feedback on what they think is interesting as uh, level players and level builders. So we'll go ahead and complete this level. Oh, uh, another thing I added was um, time. So you now have treasure and time tracked. I uh, definitely didn't want to do a pass of this, all of the UI and the information, but you can see how long it took you. There were no treasures in this level. Um, I think speed running is, is interesting. It's fun. It adds a new way of, uh, a new challenge for the level. Um, I don't know if it's always going to be on if there's a mode, but it is currently implemented. Well, let's go back to the hub. So that was the existing first level. Now we have a new, so I broke it up into level one, one through one, four, just to uh, explore, let me move over here a little bit, explore some of the basic mechanics and hopefully give folks a uh, easier onboarding process of learning. Uh, and I, I, I plan on doing this to all the levels to expand on them more. Um, I think there's seven before these, Two were turned into four. There were seven, so they, I imagine it maybe would expand to like fourteen or twenty. Uh, I'll be working on that probably for the next month, um, so they won't all be there when I update the demo on Steam. Uh, but I'll do some updates over the subsequent weeks after that to finish the flesh them out. So this is a new level. Uh, we can see some of the new stuff we've added in this one. Yeah, so you immediately see some treasure chests. So that's something that was added. Um, yeah, see their info about treasure. You can collect treasure. So open it up. And inside we have some treasure. Uh, you just drop it into your backpack. And then you can see on here we have one of three treasures. Um, the idea behind this is to give some more challenge and interesting choices to make in a level. So it's not just about whether you want to try to get to the top. It's how fast can you get there? Can you get everything um, while you're getting to the top as well? So let's jump over here. So here's uh, another treasure that's a bit more challenging for an early level. You open this set up, we'll add that. Now we have two treasures. And since I've been playing a lot, I'm pretty confident in just doing all sorts of random jumps and whatnot. So I'll just fly over. Um, oh, I updated the graphics for the oh oh uh, for the rockets to match some of the other graphical updates to make, uh, I don't really like, well, I don't think anybody really likes a lot of flat 2D particle effects in VR because they don't feel part of the world. They, they don't feel volumetric or 3D. They just feel like they're, you know, these flat images and they, there's some weird effects. Uh, if you don't do some sneaky um, tricks to hide the fact that they are flat images in space. So, I, I think it's pretty good. It's better than what it was. Um, I still need to work on the shader because uh, you get these... Um, we only have one light at this point coming in, and so you get these really dark areas that are hard to climb. There is a headlamp, which I have mixed feelings about. I think it's very useful. I'm personally more interested in a torch, but you know, how do you carry a torch while you're climbing? So I haven't tried to figure that one out yet. Um, here we go, the top. Oh, I, there are some quality of life tweaks that I want to just incorporate every time to make things easier. One of which is when your hand is inside a grabbable object, as you move it, it'll just give a slow vibration. The idea is it's, it's sometimes it's really hard to detect when your hand is in or outside of a solid object you can grab. So ways to kind of cue that for the player. Um, the next one of the next things is I want to add some audio as well to help with that. There we go, a little coyote jump. Climb this here rock. And let's just jump all the way to the end. Let's just jump down there. There we go. And let's go this way. All right. So that's one of the new levels. 
I didn't use any checkpoints that time. All right, let's see. Um, yeah, okay, I think let's go to the level editor. Uh, another thing I was thinking about, I, I really should do, and that some people had to offer um, feedback on this, basically. They go to the level editor, I, I don't know what the hell to do. Um, so I'm gonna do a tutorial, a video tutorial on there as well, maybe this week, maybe next. But so for now, I'm not going to do a tutorial. But let's just go, and I'll, I'll, um, you know what? You know, let's let's not necessarily make a tutorial. Let's just really quickly build something to show off some of the features. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to reset the editor. Uh, so here's our spawn platform. This is where we start. This is your goal platform where you need it up. Uh, I did add snap to grid, which is nice for these objects that um, I feel like you want to have more. Uh, you don't want to have so fluid um, because then it's just really hard to make it level. Um, and this gets into some future updates. I'd want to add more architectural elements to integrate into the terrain. Um, and uh, they'll, I, I'm building towards a system where you can easily like snap these, let's say, rooms together. All right, so let's. what are we going to show off? So here's our options menu. Um, snap to grid. Oh, show spheres. So this, I don't actually know when I added to the game, so it may already be there. But this just has some info about um, how to use the editor. I actually haven't looked in this in a while, so I need to update those. Let's turn them off. Gravity, you can change the overall gravity scale for a level, like if you want it to have no gravity. Um, wireframe, which is just handy. So your train brush is your basic brush to draw. Uh, terrain in the world. So, boop. Just hold on the trigger, um, and then wireframe is there if you need to say build inside. Um, it makes it a little easier. Definitely over time, I want to find more tools to make it easy to build. Um, it certainly can be quite frustrating at times. Um, I really like the reason I built this editor. Um, in fact, I built started building the editor before I knew what kind of game or anything. Um, is that I've developed VR games and different projects, whether the games are not in VR for, I don't know, five years, six years now. Started on the DK2 for Oculus. And um, it's always been difficult to build and design levels uh, outside of VR for VR. Um, they might look cool, but th there's issues with, like scale and um, spatial layout that you just, it's really hard to understand how they experienced in VR. So it's like, I want to build something that makes that easy, um, even if other things become much harder. So like fine grain control is definitely much harder in this editor and perhaps in all VR editors. Um, I think there's some ways around it, but. Um, so I, I wanted that like really quickly be able to iterate on just forms and space and how they relate to each other. Um, and I think, it, I think it does that to a certain extent. I'm definitely interested in people's feedback on it, um, but like just to fluidly build something and then, you know, drop in, try it to be like, okay, this works pretty well. Um, you know, let's go back and, you know, mess around with it some more. Um, there's, there's some features I definitely want to add at some point in the future. Hopefully they're not uh, insanely difficult to implement. Um, one of which is to really seamlessly and quickly drop in to the scale of playing it to try it out without necessarily loading the level. Uh, that's a little bit down the road, I think, but um, maybe I shouldn't bring it up in the talk now, but, but it's definitely something that I would appreciate. And so I imagine other people would appreciate. Uh, so let's just erase some of this. I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing. All right. Let's see. Yes, so we have our basic terrain brush. We have our paint brush, which uh, is graphically gives it our texture. There are some different behaviors of terrain, like ice you cannot grab, and lava hurt you can grab, but it hurts you if you grab it. It's something I want to explore more in the future. Fill brush is just a way to e easily make a certain amount of filled space. Uh, let's just delete some of that to make a weird shape. There we go, and just do some uh, rust. Yeah, there we go. 
Uh, so rust is another type. You can grab rust. It doesn't damage you. However, you can't destroy it with your uh, bombs. Okay, so agents is one of the things that I spend a decent amount of time in this update working on. So you see you have uh, platforms that you can place and uh, pillars you can place. Let's just add some pillars here. Um, and then we have our paths. Uh, I guess I pressed two things because that's not, that's not, let's delete those. So there's our deletion. Let's go path. Yeah. So path will have more features or functionality in the future, but for now what you can do is you can drop down, let's say a platform on it, and now your platform will move along your path. Um, let's see, we have... Yeah, you can drop your health. So a health would be at this location. Uh, if you want to add some info about the level, you can do, 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 do. Um, oh, yeah, doesn't type. That is a bug. I need to figure out how to resolve. So basically, the, the programming folks out there, uh, I'm using a library that simulates keystrokes on, the, on Windows. Um, to make it easy to use this keyboard. However, if you focus off of the application and back on, it doesn't think that this application is focused and so the text doesn't get sent here. So if you just click your mouse on the window for the game, um, it'll fix it, but that's you know a terrible solution. So I gotta figure that out. Um, yeah, I added a couple of other enemies. So we have the crusher which smashes um, and it's a bit terrifying when you're underneath it seeker was already there i um, definitely want to explore that enemy and enemies like that more that are more dynamic less an obstacle like the crusher and more uh, an, a, you know an enemy a creature in the world uh, spiker is similar to the crusher um, meant to be kind of terrifying uh, bomb turret, I need to do some updates on. I'm not going to show you that one. So you can see another uh, attempt to get a better effects than before, so it feels more 3D. This just shoots out a flame. Uh, it's always on here, but in the level, it's on a timer. Uh, yeah, and so that's some of the objects you can use to build levels, but then, as I mentioned earlier, wanting to add some control by the... the level developer to um, I guess build more variety and branching to levels so it's not just linear every time from A to B. Uh, I like the idea of people having some choice in how they get through a level um, or what they want to do on a level. So for that we have a couple of things. Uh, we have keys. So keys are used to unlock these different things. So I'll drop a key here and uh, well, let's, for the sake of it, we'll just put a uh, door here, which um, I need to ad address a couple of issues, some of which will just have to be addressed by the person built the level, like, you know, you obviously can't allow somebody to just jump around the door, because otherwise, what's the point? Um, but I think there's ways to do it, like if you use the... Um, the rust terrain, then they can't blast a hole through it. Um, and when I start building the, uh, when, when the levels start getting, or the architectural rooms and stuff start getting implemented, whoops, then I think it will function even better, like the doors to get into buildings and whatnot. So let's just throw some rust on there so you can't jump around it. All right, so we have our key that you get to unlock the door, and then let's just put a another key. Oh, I think obviously you would want to. Oops. Ah, need to work on that treasure. You know, probably wouldn't just have the key next to the lock, but for the sake of showing this stuff off, so there's another key. Our dynamic gin path, which I think is pretty cool. Oh, where did the treasure go? There it is. So let's put it right there. 
And this, you actually grab this object and move it, and well, it's going to create a path. Excuse me. When you put the key in there, so let's put this treasure up at the top. There we go. Oh, you know what? That doesn't snap. I wonder if it should snap. And all right, here's our fabulous level, and I want to put our goal there at the end. So let's go ahead and try it out. Oh, looks like I forgot. We, oh, but he's going to blow himself up because he's going to shoot missiles right into the thing above him. All right, that works out because I don't want to have to deal with him. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay. That was not, on, that was not meant to happen. Now let's start again. And yeah, there we go. Oh, I need to update those graphics there. The old flat style. Um, well, we don't need to wait for that. Let's just climb over here, and you see our pillars, and they are, there's our health. Here we go. Let's put that in there. Um, our info that we didn't add anything to. Seems to be something with my particle effect there not working right. I'll have to look into that. All right, so here's our door. Oh, I guess he blew himself up finally. There's our key. Our key over in our door. Oh, there we go. So if you think maybe a little Indiana Jones influence here, definitely going on. Oh, I didn't add. Uh, huh, didn't leave that open. And I can't blow it up. Although now that I realize when I think about it, you can grab this stuff so I can just climb around it. So that was a level design error there. Um, not really a need for the door. Whoop. You know what, let's put these down since I have a tendency. Oh no! Oh no. All right, so we're in the room that we can't get into from the other side. Oh yeah, smoke, I need to fix the smoke so you can see it looks kind of shitty. Oh, bad, sorry for the language. Um, all right, so we got another key, and drop it on there, and we can see that our thing is going to start building our terrain for us. Okay, so I guess I could just hold on to it, too. Another thing I want to look into in future updates is more of the dynamically generating terrain. So like. You can destroy it, it can be built, but what other things could be done um, to make that aspect of it more interesting than just like, oh cool, I can destroy the train, but what's the purpose? Uh, how is it a mechanic, you know, interesting. So let's climb up here. Yep, 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 yep. Oh yeah, that's what, yeah, and, so, oh, let's open our treasure. Yeah, there's some stuff with like, because you can grab, because jumping starts with two hands, I can grab something if my other hand is held, it gets weird. Uh, that's pretty frustrating, I should, probably shouldn't tell you all about it. Um, like, hey, look at this bad bug, but, you know, any ideas on how to, uh, what would be interesting there, right? I don't, I don't know. I feel like that's a pretty big issue to get it right. Um, so I'm not going to try to, you know, get it perfect the first time. All right. And there's our level. Uh, oh, it says hub. I guess I didn't rename it. 101 took us three minutes. I guess that means this video is probably like 10 minutes. So I should probably finish it up. Let's go back to the hub. Cool. All right. Well, let me know what you think about this video. Uh, if it, you know, was it interesting? What other things would you like to see in updates? How long would you like them to be? I've looked at some other discords. I'm, I'm a noob on discord and development uh, kind of open like this. Um, so I've been looking at other, how, what other folks do well and trying to uh, borrow some of the great ideas. But, you know, I'm very interested in feedback on what is valuable and what isn't valuable. Uh, sounds like my dog has just opened the door to come in the room. 
So with that, we will. He he uses his nose, by the way, in case you're wondering, like how my dog uses his paws to open a, um, to turn a knob. He doesn't um, that you know of. Uh, okay, so now I'm rambling. So yeah, thanks for watching, and till next time.